this is a recording for notes for pre-calculus, and this is 5.3, Solving Trigonometric Equations. So uh, we're going to use standard algebraic techniques to solve trigonometric equations and solve trigonometric equations of a quadratic type. And so we do want to remember the kind of whole table of values uh, that we can generate and... Um, and maybe some of the maybe some of the identities too as we kind of put things uh, in and look at other things. Oh, I didn't look at all the other ones. We want to solve trigonometric equations involving multiple angles and use inverse trigonometric functions to solve trigonometric equations. So here is our introduction uh, to this section. And um, so to solve trig equations, we use algebraic techniques when possible. So things like factoring, getting one side equal to zero, uh, getting x or the trig function of x uh, alone on one side, and then see what happens. So our preliminary goal is to uh, isolate the trig function on one side. So look at this one. If we have 2 sine x equals 1, when we divide by 2, we get sine x equals 1 half. Once it's sine x equals 1 half, maybe you're even recognizing that that might be something that uh, we, we are already familiar with as we go. So then... Um, to solve for x, and this is when at sine x equals 1 half, remember, um, and maybe you're thinking also of the table of values. Oh, just kidding. Um, <clears throat> the table of values that we can generate. And um, so when sine is here and sine theta, and this is 0, uh, 30, 6, 45, oh my goodness, 60 and 90, and this is 0, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, blah, blah, blah. I only wanted to go here because this is, this is pi over 6. So we know that if the sine of x is equal to 1 half, then x could equal pi over 6 as the angle. But also remember that um, these functions are having that value not only at pi over 6, but if you think about all students take calculus, um, that sign is positive there and sign is positive again there. So um, that would give us a ref reference angle is equal to the angle pi over 6 here, but then our reference angle here is pi over 6, uh, but then this is whole 1 pi minus pi over 6. So we could also get 5 pi over 6. And then if we look at this periodic function kind of going through, um, we we get pi over 6 here. Here's 5 pi over 6. It's, it's that value there and there. And then if we go from here, let me use maybe a different color. If we go from here, all the way to here, we've added a period. So that's 2 pi. So then really, we can get pi over 6 plus 2 pi, and then we can get 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi as well. So then we can get that repetitiveness as we as we look at it. Now, notice this is here, um, the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we do want to think about what happens in a full revolution from 0 to 2 pi. And that gives us kind of our anchor values, I'll call them. And then we just do those spinning values for um, as, as we go. And I do want to add something to this page. And uh, because this will come up as you're doing things. So you do want to be a good direction reader. Because if they say give the solution in the interval <coughs> from 0 to 2 pi. And usually that has a parentheses because that's like one full revolution. But if it's zero, we would call it zero up to 2 pi. But then, you know, 2 pi, if it's equal to 2 pi, we would just use zero as we go. And so in this situation, um, the solution was x equals pi over 6 and uh, x equals 5 pi over 6. But if we're asked for the solution in general, 
or just to solve without being given that interval, then our answers are x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, kind of spin, 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 and x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. So just be super aware of that. Um, <clears throat> and I like to say that right now because I, I feel like in the problem solving, it just says one or the other. It doesn't make kind of a big deal about it. Uh, but you want to know that if it's just in that interval from 0 to 2 pi, you're usually giving just specific values. But if it's a general solution, uh, then you're going uh, plus 2 pi n as, as you look at it. And then that just kind of says that right there, where n is an integer. I didn't say that part. but um, So this just also shows that circular function, and, and that's kind of how I looked at it as well. And um, also just a note to self, when you're solving trigonometric equations, uh, you should write your answers using exact values rather than decimal approximations whenever possible. And, and often that will be the case. So, um, so that will we'll be good to go. All right, let's do uh, some problems here. And so here's our first one, number one, uh, solve sine x plus the square root of 2 equals negative sine x. So <clears throat> this is not an identity where we can't cross the equal sign. So now we actually do want to cross the equal sign. Why don't you try to see if you can get uh, sine x alone, and I will as well, and then we'll compare our results. OK, so let's see how we did here. Um, I would maybe add sine x. Um, and then subtract the square root of 2, divide by 2, uh, and then I get sine x equals uh, negative the square root of 2 over 2. <clears throat> so as you can see, I kind of had generated my table here as well. So now we want to investigate this. And we know that the sign of um, is negative. So all students take calculus. So sign is positive there, and sign is positive there. So it can't be there. Uh, we also want to get our reference angle. And our reference angle in this case, uh, since the sine of theta is the square root of 2 over 2, even though it's negative, our reference angle is pi over 4. And so if we put that in um, over here, our, we can come down. Our reference angle right there would be pi over 4. Our actual angle would be from here all the way around. So that's pi plus pi over 4. So um, we get an angle of x equals 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. And then our second angle, uh, we could have a reference angle of pi over 4 right here. That means our original angle starts at the positive x-axis and goes all the way around to here. So that's 2 pi minus pi over 4. So x equals 2 pi minus pi over 4. So that's 8 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4. That's 7 pi over 4. Notice the directions were just solve. So we want every solution that we can get or to represent every solution that we can get. So well, the way we're going to write that then is x equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n and x equals or x equals 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And so we do get two solutions uh, for that problem as, as we go through this. <clears throat> now, that's a pretty straightforward problem, and we will have uh, things like that as, as we go. Uh, but I do want to talk about something that will come up. And so I've added an extra problem Maybe you can call this 1B that really isn't. Um, but it's an extra problem to kind of help you uh, with your homework as you go. And so it is sine 4x equals negative square root of 2 over 2. And we'll cover things like this, but but somehow 
if people are working on homework early on in this lesson, um, you know, I, I want you to kind of know what's happening as we go. So think about this, first of all. Um, let me, I don't know if I can, oh yes, I am pasting my, my little table there. So we are still using the square root of 2 over 2, but now instead of being sine x equals negative square root of 2, it's sine of 4x equals uh, negative square root of 2 over 2. And um, so now our reference angle, uh, same kind of situation, all uh, students take calculus, we're still in those same two quadrants, um, but now, um, and we still have a reference angle of pi over 4. But now we have that 4x is equal to um, this. So instead of saying, like we did before, that x equals, um, oh, what were those? Uh, when we were down here, that was x equals uh, 5 pi over 4, I think. And then this other one was when we were down over here, and that was x equals 7 pi over 4. So instead of saying really 1x is equal to each of those, um, we have to kind of think about it as 4x. So in our problem, this 4x kind of stays intact. Um, and maybe I'm going to call that u uh, as, as we look at it, not x, just not x, so that it's not the same thing. So 4x equals, and this is if it's on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, 4x equals 5 pi over 4. And then we just have to multiply each side by 1 fourth. And uh, then we get uh, x equals 5 pi over 8. So if it's in this interval from 0 to 2 pi, we get 5 pi over 8. And then uh, for our second solution, we also have to say 4x equals 7 pi over 4. And then we're going to multiply by 1 fourth on each side. And instead, we get x equals 7 pi over 8. So just kind of be aware of that. That's, that's maybe a little difference. Um, but the other thing to note, and this is where sometimes people make a mistake, on um, this last one, so, you know, we, we had gotten these, and then we just added the 2 pi n. So if it's not... Uh, in just that interval, we do have to kind of think about um, this kind of u thing. And so then we have to say 4x equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. So before we divide by 4 like we did over here, when we divided by or multiplied by one fourth, we did that right away. We have to, we can't do that and then add two pi n um, because it's it's that four x that is the included in that kind of spin. So it's going to repeat more frequently uh, as we as we go through that. So um, then. If we maybe multiply everything by one fourth again, and I'll just distribute that one fourth there, then what happens in this one is x equals five pi over eight, which is as five pi over, oh my gosh, that is 16. So my apologies. Um, I don't, what was I thinking? as I did that. So this is, oh, that, there it's 4. This is 16, and this is 16. So 5 pi over 16, but then plus um, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over, pi n over 2, when we simplify that. So that's the first answer of those two, if it's all real numbers. And then we do the same with the other one. So 4x equals 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. So we add that 2 pi n right away, then multiply by 1 fourth. 
I, I'm embarrassed to say my notes are with me and everything, but I just guess I wasn't looking at them. I, I'm a little embarrassed that I did not catch that four times four is 16, but whatever. X equals uh, then seven pi over 16, now I know, uh, plus uh, pi n over two. So those denominators get to be the uh, different values. So just be conscious of that uh, as you go. And we'll have more in this section about multiple angles, but um, I'd like to go over that right away because I, I feel like it's been an issue for students on occasion when you get to this 2 pi n part. So um, now we're going to just solve a couple problems. Uh, go ahead and um, let's see. These are squared now. So when we get tangent squared alone or sine squared alone, then we're going to have to take the square root of both sides and we're going to need the positive and negative square root. So um, these again just say solve. Maybe let's do this first one together and then you can try the second one. So for 2a, I'm, I have 3 tangent squared x minus 1 equals 0. And um, so I'm going to add 1 and I'm going to divide by 3. So tangent squared x equals 1 third. Then I'm going to square root each side. So then when I do that, I'm going to get tangent x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Well, that's like the square root of 1 over the square root of 3 or 1 over the square root of 3. I have to rationalize the denominator. And so the tangent of x is equal to plus or minus uh, the square root of 3 over 3. And that should seem familiar to us as well as we look at this. So um, now I'm going to do kind of that same stuff. So I'm just going to paste my little table here. Um, maybe I'll kind of paste it in the middle bottom here. But now I have to think of something else. In that last problem, we were looking at sine. But now we're looking at tangent. And so we have to remember that tangent uh, theta has a period of pi. And so tangent and cotangent, both of those will have some things that are similar. And so since they have a period of pi, then um, they repeat, so, so it repeats at pi n. So it repeats at pi n. And um, so when we're looking at things, all students take calculus. That is going to repeat. So we just have to find things in the first and second quadrant. So this tangent will be positive there, tangent will be negative there. And then instead of adding 2 pi n, we'll add pi n because we will get values over here, but it, it's those same repeated values as we go. So that's something to kind of keep it track of as we look at this. So let's look at that. All students take calculus. I'm just going to use the first two quadrants and I'm going to add pi n. And my reference angle. Uh, for this one, tangent is the square root of 3 over 3, so my reference angle is pi over 6. And so I'm going to get the positive one, so x equals pi over 6 plus pi n. So actually, you know, that will give me 1 right there as well. And then um, I also want to look at when this reference angle is pi over 6 right here. So the actual angle is right there. And um, that's pi minus pi over 6. So 6 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6. So x equals 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. And that'll give me that one. Then when I add pi, it'll give me the one that's over there as well. Um, so maybe I did the harder one. Maybe not. Um, but think about sine. Now there's going to be like, you know, sine squared. When we square root that, we can have positives and negatives. So maybe all the quadrants. Go ahead and try that one and let's see how we do. 
So let's first get uh, that solved. And um, so we get sine squared x equals 3 fourths, sine x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 after we do that. And uh, then we have to kind of look at these quadrants and all that good stuff. So our reference angle is pi over 3. And for this one, I just want to, you know, kind of do all of these. There's going to be four answers uh, kind of as, as we look at this and um, see what happens. Up to four answers, I guess, is the way we'll say that. And um, so sometimes... Well, let's just see what happens. Um, so first, I'm going to get this angle, and that's going to be pi over 3. So x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And uh, then I'm going to get this one. And so that, that angle with this as pi over 3 right there. So that's 2 pi over 3. So x equals, I'm going to write that over here, x equals 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then I'm going to get another one, uh, which will be down here, where this reference angle, um, let's see, I'll go like that. Uh, this reference angle is pi over 3 right there. So that's 3 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3 plus, so that's x equals 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then my next one is going to be over here. And we're going kind of all the way around to there. And this reference angle is pi over 3. And so there we get x equals um, 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So now let's kind of think about what's happening um, as we go from one of these to the other and, um, and kind of see if we can make this less than 4 in this situation uh, as, we, as we go. So if we look at uh, these solutions, and maybe we notice um, that here we're at pi over 3, and then here, when we go over to here, this is 4 pi over 3. So I've actually added 1 pi, you know, and I, I didn't maybe draw that super perfect. But I can kind of consolidate these and say instead of doing both of these, I can put these two together and instead make one statement that x equals uh, pi over 3 plus pi n. And that one statement replaces these two. Likewise, uh, I'll use another kind of this aqua -y color. Just kidding. I don't like that for, uh, I'll use orange. So likewise, I have this angle, uh, which is 2 pi over 3. And then I have this one, which is 5 pi over 3. So if I add 3 pi over 3, which is 1 pi, I can consolidate these two into one statement, which would be x equals uh, 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. Now, you know, that's not always going to happen. Um, you know, think about if we're only going like pi over 6 from here and from there and from there and, and from there, the, the same thing might happen. Um, and, but sometimes we won't always be adding, you know, a ref, the same reference angle as we look at that. And, and we'll see that as we move on through these problems. So here's our next problem. Um, hopefully you, you feel like, oh, that's a little bit more interesting or complicated. And so remember, our, our initial thing is to kind of try to use algebra. So this one is the cotangent of x times the cosine squared of x 
equals 2 cotangent x. So my algebra part of me says, well, you know what? If I move them all to one side of the equal sign and set it equal to 0, uh, I can factor things. And I think there's going to be a common factor of cotangent. So let's do that. I'm going to subtract that. And that's going to give me cotangent x cosine squared x minus 2 cotangent x equals 0. Now I'm going to factor out just cotangent x, and that's going to give me cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. And now I have two factors, and I can solve these kind of independently, but then they make, you know, kind of the whole the whole answer as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is put cotangent x equal to 0. And so in my mind, if the cotangent x equals 0, then that means the tangent of x is undefined. And um, so my reference angle is uh, equal to pi over 2. And, and so that's kind of how I think about that. I don't I don't know what you do. And cotangent, again, all students take calculus. It has a period of only pi, so we only have to look at these first two here. And um, then as we look at that, um, and that's equal to 0, that's going to happen just at pi over 2. It, our angle would be right there. And um, that is 0, 1. So, this is cosine and sine, sine over cosine, 1 over 0, cosine over sine, 0 over 1. So um, we get that value, x equals pi over 2, plus, and remember, we, we just add pi n, pi n for that one. So that's part of our answer. Then we move to the other part of our answer, and that is to get this other factor equal to 0 and see what happens. So here we have, oops, cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. So cosine squared x equals 2. And then uh, squaring, rooting each side, cosine x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Hmm, well, what does that mean? Is that on our table of values? Well, wait a minute. The square root of 2 is about uh, plus or minus 1.414. What do we know about our maximum and minimum values of cosine? Our range for cosine is from 1, negative 1, excuse me, to 1 inclusive. So, we um, we can't get 1.414, so there is no solution on that side. But keep in mind, we still have that set of values that does work. Um, so we're going to um, to kind of stop this part right now. And our next part is equations of quadratic type. So I think we factored things before that looked quadratic-like. And that's what we're going to kind of deal with in this next part. So that concludes part one.